So, okay, let us uh, continue our, our discussion on uh, Poisson process. So, before that, uh, in the last class, uh, we introduced what is a stochastic process, and uh, then uh, we introduced some properties like uh, what is a counting process, and then what we meant by uh, independent increments. And based on these properties, we defined a process called Poisson process. So, we are going to look at uh, some of the properties of this Poisson process and uh, try to prove them. As you will see that uh, uh, these properties uh, uh, you can directly derive from the definition and uh, and uh, they, they are also uh, very appealing in the sense uh, when you want to do kind of a counting, this property is what uh, you desire. So, these are the properties we said uh, the 10 is if uh, a Poisson process, a random process is a Poisson process with rate lambda. That means n, c, n is a counting process and has independent increments. And if you take any interval or any indices t and s, then the number of counts. So, we said that this is n t minus n s has Poisson distribution with a rate which is lambda times the length of that interval t minus s. So, we are going to today see the following properties. So, we had said some random process to be a Poisson process. Now, we are saying that it has other equivalent characterization that is you can say a po n is a Poisson process process with lambda that is equivalent to saying that the intercount times u1, u2. So, remember we have already defined what we mean by intercount times that is between two count the time uh, elapsed. So, that I am going to denote as this random variable u1, u2. Okay. So, they are random variables right? for a process the time between two successive counts can be a random. So, that is why I am denoting them as u1, u2. They are these inter count times they are mutually independent and also exponentially distributed with parameter lambda. So, all this u1, u2 they are identically distributed further independent and uh, common distribution is exponential distribution. And this is same as saying if you are going to take any tau positive then n tau what is this n tau? This is the in the process the, uh, the random variable indexed at time tau is Poisson with rate lambda t. So, if you are going to take any tau, this n t is Poisson distributed with, with n t and if you are going to take any n, the conditional density of the first n count times. You remember earlier we have defined small t 1, t 2, t 3 like t 1 was the first count time, t 2 was the second count time like that, but this count itself can happen at random times. So, that is why I am now going to denote them as random variables with capital letters and if you are going to look at the first n count times and their joint distribution, that joint distribution is given conditioned on the fact that this n tau has taken the value n that is going to be given as 
n factorial divided by tau to the power n. So, we are saying this is A same as saying B, B same as C or A same saying same as C. All these are one implies the other. Okay. So, okay, just now from this property, we are going to look them, try to prove each one of them today. What it is saying is, if I have a Poisson process, okay, then the time of arrival between any two counts or the interval between any two counts is going to be exponentially distributed with rate lambda and these intervals are going to be independent. The distribution of these intervals is going to be independent and further, now if you look focus on this. Okay, so I have missed it. This is conditioned on the event and tau. Suppose let us say nt, if the Poisson process is that at the time t tau, sorry tau, n counts has happened. You are conditioned uponing this. Now you want to see that what is the joint distribution of this. So, first count happened at time index t1, second count happened at t2 and let us say the nth count happened at time tn. This distribution is, is going to be expressed like this. Okay? And uh, I should also. So, notice that I am already saying till time small tau n counts has happened and the joint distribution of this times is going to be this. So, now if you focus on this part, forget the numerator, now it is going to be like just now 1 upon t to the tau to the power n, right. So, if I am going to look at the distribution of n random variables and uh, if it happens that uh, their joint distribution is 1 upon tau to the power n, can you say something about what this joint distribution looks like? So, just take n equals to 1. So, I am saying 1 upon tau. So, in the interval tau, I am saying something like uh, the PDF is constant 1 upon tau, what that corresponds to uniform, right something. Now, I am saying the joint distribution of n random variable is kind of 1 upon tau to the power n. It, it, what does this imply in a way? What? Yeah, there are n uniformly distributed random variable each with parameter tau and uh, they are independent, right? So, they are getting multiplied 1 upon tau into 1 upon tau into. Further, I have to look at such kind of ordering. This uniform random variables, further I need to condition that the outcome of the first random variable is smaller than the outcome of the second variable and the outcome of the second random variable is smaller than the outcome of the third random variable. So, I need to further condition on this. So, if I for further condition on this, I am going to get this factor 1 by n factorial in the denominator. So, when it the n factor goes in the numerator. So, this, this n factor is coming due to the fact that I am looking for this t1, t2 be such that they are in arranged in the increasing order. So, in a way, there are two distributions that are related to my Poisson distribution. One is what? The, the exponential distribution that is the inter arrival, the inter count times are exponentially distributed. And now, if you look at the directly the time of the count itself and the joint distribution, there seems to be some kind of uniform distribution that is coming into a picture here. So, so let us try to Prove. Now, what we are going to do to, to complete this proposition theorem, we need to show that each one of them implies each, right. So, I have to show that A implies B, 
A also implies C and if I take B, it should be the case that B implies A as well as B implies C as well as if I take C, it should be the case that C implies A and C implies B. So, instead of trying all this, what we will try to show is A implies B and we will show that B implies C. So, we will show that A implies B and then B implies C. So, that should be sufficient right to show that each one C implies B is already C okay. Oh, sorry. I have to do this and then I will do this. Okay, let us say now let us try to show that A implies C. So, let us assume that uh, N is a Poisson process. So, as soon as I assume N is a Poisson process, I have all these properties available to me because that is the meaning of N is a Poisson process. So, now let us take any n real numbers such that they are ordered like this t 1, t 2 all the way up to t n where uh, t 2 is going to be larger than t 1 and so on like this. So, now think of them as, so this is T1, this is T2 all the way up to let us say Tn. So, let us take an epsilon and now what I am going to do is, I am going to look at a small region So, I will just uh, take an epsilon and just go behind T1 and get T1 minus epsilon and uh, similarly around this I will go slightly epsilon behind and I get T2 minus epsilon and uh, this is like Tn minus epsilon. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to look at this intervals here. So, this means I am open at this point, closed at this point and similarly. Okay. Now, let us try to find joint distribution of So, what is this T1, T2? These are the time, count times and these are the random variables. So, let us try to understand. Now, let us try to find what is the probability that. So, what is T1 here, capital T1? The time when the first count happens, right? So, let us assume I am interested in this Ti belongs to. Okay. So, what is this telling? I am interested in when I take T1, I am asking the question the probability that the first count happen in this interval T1. So, T1, T2, they are some given numbers to me. Now, T, Ti is a random variable, right? Now, I am basically asking the question 
okay, this t i th that means the i th count happening in this interval. Okay, and now I want the I am looking at a joint distribution and I want this to happen, this condition for all i 1 to n. Now, if I now I want to express this in such a way that I can go and apply my independent increment properties. So, I want let us say I want to apply this. How, how can I express this probability to exploit my independent increment property? So, one thing I can now do is what I am basically asking is the first count should be happening here, right? That is T1 capital T1 is T1 minus epsilon and T1. If that is the case, then there should be no count happened before that, right? And the first count should have happened here. And then if I want T2 to be again in this interval, there should no count should have happened in this interval and the next count should have happened in this interval. Then, then my T2 is going to fall in this interval, right? So, so then this is same as asking Is this correct? I can express this joint distributions like this. That is, nothing happens here, and the first count happened here, and the second count only happened here. That means nothing, I do not want any count to happen here, and like that. And the last count happens only in this region. So, you see that now I have expressed this quantity in terms like uh, in terms of the increments. Okay. So, now I want to expand this. If n is a Poisson process, are this all of these events are independent or not? Because I am looking at the different different in the, uh, uh, intervals, right? And I know that for Poisson process, they are all independent. So, And now I am going to further exploit the property that. So, now if I am going to look at, no, first consider the case. So, I can write them as probability, okay, just let me write it for in terms of the probability first. Probability. This is for the first one and the last one is going to be
right? I have simply applied my probabilities on each one of these. Yes. Right? Now, this is coming from what? Like as I said, this is coming from independent increment properties. Now, further, what is the third port property of the Poisson process? It is going to be Poisson, right? Like if you are going to. So, I could uh, as well write this guy as like n minus uh, 0 here at 1, and uh, I could just take n 0 as 0 itself. Now, what is this probability is going to be? Sorry, this is 0. What is this? What is the length of this interval? T1 minus epsilon. And I am asking, so this is going to be Poisson process with what rate? Lambda into T1 minus epsilon, right? Now, what is the probability that a Poisson process with rate lambda T1 minus epsilon takes the value 0? e to the power here the length of interval is simply t1 minus epsilon right now what is the probability that it takes value 1 the length of the interval here is it is simply epsilon so here it is a poisson process with rate what lambda epsilon right and what is this value is going to be lambda into lambda epsilon and there is a one factor in the denominator which we can skip right. So, like this you can keep writing for all of them and just let us write what is this looks like e to the power of lambda this is going to be what T n minus 1. minus T n plus epsilon and uh, the final one is going to look like lambda. T n minus epsilon here this is going to look like epsilon e to the power lambda epsilon again. So now if I am going to simplify all these things, there are how many lambda epsilons multiply getting multiplied here? There are going to be n one of them. And if you go into simplify all of them, you see that uh, some subtraction is going to happen because T1 is happening it will also come as minus T1 later and uh, if you are going to simplify that what it will end up is simply it is for minus lambda Tn. Okay. So, whatever this probability I was looking at this joint distribution it is now lambda epsilon. So, this I am going to simply write as lambda n epsilon n into it lambda t and now let us say I am now want to take this probability that T i belongs to T i minus epsilon come on divided by if I want to do this epsilon n this is going to be equals to lambda n to the power e to the power lambda t n and right, that is what I have shown. So, now if you are going to see what I am doing here for a given t 1 t 2 t n I am looking at for each of this t i around an interval of epsilon length and now everywhere are these uh, lengths are of epsilon. So, what I am basically looking at for a given this T 1 T 2 I am looking at the mass of this random variables in a ball 
which is of what volume? So, for example, let us take a simple case. I have now taken, let us say this is my T1 and this is my T2. On T1, I have looked at a interval of epsilon and also on T2, I have also looked at an volume of epsilon. So, what is this region is going to be? This region is going to be, I was basically looking for my T1, T2 to be in this region here, right? where T1 is of length epsilon and T2 is also of length epsilon. So, what is the area here? Epsilon square, right? So, if you are going to uh, extend it to n dimension, what is this volume is going to be? X epsilon to the power n. So, now this is what I want to do. I was basically looking at these joint distributions to lie in some volume which has, uh, which is epsilon square. Now, that probability I am dividing it by epsilon n square and now I what I got is lambda to the power n e to the power lambda n. Now, this epsilon I have chosen is arbitrary, right? I could as well let this epsilon go to infinity here. Even if I take epsilon arbitrary small, this ratio is kind of independent of lambda n, right? This value is going to remain the same. So, if I take this ratio and let epsilon go in, let, let, let epsilon tend to 0, what this ratio will convert, what is this ratio according to our definition? So, you remember the way we, how we defined our CDF, sorry PDF and we connected it to the probability. So, what we had said? We had said that f of x at a point x can be thought as limit as, this is in a all one dimensional case as epsilon tends to 0, probability that x is let us say in this interval x minus epsilon, x plus epsilon divided by epsilon. Did we say this? When uh, we are try to argue the relation between a problem, uh, uh, when we try to give interpretation of what we mean by a PDF of a point at a given point. So, we are dealing here with what like we are dealing here with uh, uh, continuous random variables, right? This T's here are the continuous random variables t is the count time, right? They can take any number on the real num value. So, here we are dealing with a continuous random variables. So, when we try to give an interpretation for our PDF, we had said that PDF of a random variable x at a point x can be thought of its probability in the neighborhood of x, where that neighborhood is defined in terms of epsilon and uh, we can make that uh, neighborhood small by letting epsilon go to 0 and if, when we take this ratio that is nothing but the PDF, yeah. Ti? Yeah, these are finite, but each one of them can is a continuous random variable. I am talking about individual one, right. So, each one of them itself is a, it can take any positive, any real number. So, so, if you have this probability and if you just let epsilon go to 0 in this fashion, that is nothing but the CDF. Now, we can apply the same definition here, right. But here instead of a real line, we are in a n dimensional space. That is what instead of just the epsilon, we are looking at epsilon to the power n, which corresponds to area, uh, which is the volu volume in the n, n dimensional space. So, due to this, We could now write f of t1, f of t1, t2 all the way up to tn, the joint distribution of this to be what? Lambda to the power n, e to the power lambda tn provided what is this? This t1 is greater than t2 and all the way up to tn and now we have 0 otherwise.
Is this correct? Are you convinced? And what is this? This is the joint distribution of this random variables. So, this is what we just uh, derived by using the properties of my Poisson process. So, it is clear that we use our second property here of the Poisson process that independent uh, increments and then we use the properties of Poisson distribution, the third property here. So, did we use anywhere the property, the first property which was which said that uh, the Poisson process is a counting process. Anyway, we use it right because one of the what is one of the properties of the counting process n of 0 is 0 right. I mean we use part of that the like counting process is much more, but uh, we partly used uh, some part of the definition of the it being a counting process here. Okay, now we have, but this is not what we are interested in right. Fine, we have come up with the joint distribution of my count times, but what I am interested to show property B is the distribution of my inter count times. Okay, now, how to derive a joint distribution of the inter count times using the joint distribution of this count times themselves. So, if you want to derive what property you can exploit now, is there a way you can think of? So, from this I basically want to now go and write what is the distribution, the joint distribution of this random variables. So, if there is a relation between this u s and this t s, I should be able to apply my transformation of random variables properties and should be able to derive this right. We have already studied that, but the now the question is what is the relation between this u and t's. So, we already know that right like u i t i minus t i minus 1. So, we know this relation now how can we write this joint distribution in terms of f of x yeah, f of uh, t's here what is the property what is what is that uh, we know about this. So, we know that right when we have to write this distribution we need to compute the Jacobian. So, what what is the thing so we have this. So, let me write it more explicit we have u 1 equals to t 1 u 2 equals to t 2 minus t 1 and uh, like that and also we know the other way around right. So, t 1 anyway equals to u 1 and what is t 2? u 1 plus u 2 and t 3 is u 3 u 2 u 1 all this we know right. So, how to write this then? So, we already know that this is nothing but u 1 to u n of u n u 2 to u n is equals to f of t 1 t 1 t 1 up to t n. What was this and what we had here? A Jacobian matrix right a determinant of a Jacobian matrix and what was that? So, can somebody quickly compute what is the Jacobian matrix here? It is going to be 1, why is that? You are just going to get a. So, whatever you can just compute that and finally, whatever we want here we will have a unit determinant. So, now how to express this? I have this T 1, but T 1 is u 1 and T n is sum of all the random variable, but this distribution only depends on it, it should be T n here on T n here. So, what is T n in terms of use? T n is nothing but sum of u i's right. So, because of that you could write that as lambda n e to the power minus lambda
and this is for any u and this is going to be 0 otherwise. Now from this uh, did we conclude what we wanted to say here? I am looking at the joint distribution of u1, u2 all the way up to un. Now what I have done is finally able to show that give me any u, this can be expressed as lambda to the power n e to the power lambda un plus u2 up to un. So what is this basically? This is nothing but the product like lambda e to the power lambda e to the power lambda u1 into lambda times e to the power minus lambda u2 like that right. I can split it as the product of n such terms and what is each term there? What is each term there? It is an exponential random variable with parameter lambda. So that is what exactly the claim and why they, why I am saying independent? Because this joint distribution I am able to express as a product of n, n distributions, right? And each one of them now corresponding to exponential random variable with lambda. So that is why this claim holds, okay. So as you see, I mean, uh, if you have a Gauche, uh, if you have a Poisson process, that means nothing but if you just look into the uh, inter count times, the collection of inter count times, they are nothing but they are Poisson distributed with the same rate lambda. So if I say I Poisson process with rate lambda or I say I have a bunch of random variables which are a, poison, a, a random process where each random variables are independent and everybody has a Poisson distributed with rate lambda. That means I am basically referring to the same Poisson process with rate lambda.